Welcome back, my friends, to another episode of TFT Hyperroll from Mission for Tuition. It's called Mission for Tuition because we are trying to raise money for our son's middle and high school tuition. He has to go to a ridiculously expensive school. No donations, nothing like that. Just help the algorithm. Like, comment, subscribe, do all of that good stuff so the video will get more views. It'll make more money for tuition. And with that said, let's get started. So I always like getting something like a singed with a giant belt off the carousel because you have tanky character with a tanky item and you can obviously make it into a sunfire cape if you get so lucky. Also, love picking up an early Tarek. That way I can find out where the magical hex is going to be. And it actually ends up in one of my favorite spots, which is in the bottom right hand corner. That is a great spot for a carry to hang out, and yes, you're susceptible to blitz pulls, but there are ways around it that we'll get into later. First, let's look at the opening augments, and I don't have any Colossus, so armor plating ain't gonna work. I'm not a huge fan of Trade Sector unless I'm doing something like Yordles, so it pretty much defaulted over to Cybernetic Implants, which means I'm probably going to want to head in the direction of Scrap, since Scraps are going to use individual items, which will allow them to get the Cybernetic Implant buff. And with no buffs active and no two stars, I fear I'm in for a pretty rough ride in this first fight, although I'm a little bit surprised how well my team is holding up. That's in large part thanks to the Cybernetic Implant augment granting the additional health and the additional attack damage, but it's still not enough to hold up against an angry green blob that is Zack. When he wants you dead, you go down. And I was really hoping for a chain vest so I could make a sunfire cape on Singed, but uh, it just wasn't to be. So I go ahead and grab the sword for the future and then decide to try and roll through and see all of the potential scraps and innovators that I can pick up. I'm not exactly sure whether to put Zillion out instead of Tarek for that initial innovator buff, but once I see the chance to go to a two-star Ezreal, I dump a Ziggs because in reality, even in a scrap build, I'm probably not going to be using him and decide to just go with the two-star Ezreal to take me into the next fight. And with a couple of silvers out there, you can now see the actual advantage of the cybernetic implant. It is allowing me to hold up against a team that probably should have beaten me or otherwise would have beaten me, but not for my augment and the fact that I put items on them. I decided to go ahead and put out Trundle for this next fight to trigger the scrap buff just so I could get a completed item on Ezreal. I was kind of torn because if I put out Zillion, I would have gotten the Innovator and the Little Mr. Roboto, but I figured the completed item would work out. Unfortunately, Lissandra just manages to get her ult off and finish me off. And then I had a really tough choice. The shop came up and said, here's a chain vest. You can make a Sunfire Cape if you want, but I'd much rather have a Rage Blade on an empowered Ezreal. This way I can take the sword, put it on to Trundle. That way he'll be the one getting the item for the next round. And as you can see, I'm also picking up the innovators as I'm going along. Innovators and scrap just make a natural combination because Ezreal is such a good carry, especially if you can get him up to gold with the four or six scraps. And I say in a lot of these videos, look to the game for direction. I had just picked up a Janna, which I got very early in the match. I already have a Tarek out there, so the chance to get an Enchanter Heart, giving myself an additional Enchanter, will be very powerful later on, especially since I already knew I had a two-star Tarek just sort of waiting for me, and this can send the game in an entirely different direction. I can use Janna as my additional scrap at this time, but also now have three Enchanters. The Enchanter buff is very strong because it gives you increased magic resist across the entire team and then your healing champions do additional healing, thus keeping your team up longer. Now since we're running the Cybernetic Implants, Ezreal has a little bit more health since he has items and so does Singed and that helps us win this round. As always, having a friend at Riot helps a ton as I get an early Seraphine to go along with my early Janna. Having two four costs in stage six is really good. I decide to go ahead and pick up the sword as an additional item because I am looking to Ezreal to do most of my damage. I can switch out Hymer for the Seraphine, thereby making that Hex a little bit more powerful and then give her the power to cast more often. More casting equals more healing equals more damage, 
equals more healing equals more damage. It's an easy formula. And let's go ahead and speed this fight up a lot, but you'll get the general idea. The healing is absolutely key. Now, I had picked up a silver two-star Janna in the last round. Thank you, Gary. And that enabled my team to stay healed. And watch that Seraphine, when she casts, is also healing the team around her. Janna is able to keep everyone up, enabling us to finish them off quite nicely. And this fight that we're going to speed through will give you another idea of how strong enchanters can be. Janna does, yes, keep getting the Rabadon's death cap as her scrap item, but you can see that it helps keep the team alive, which is giving Ezreal all the time in the world he needs to help finish off the other team. After finishing off that team, we are one NPC fight away from the final augment. None of this was really thrilling. Salvage Bin does give us some extra items, but it's not really working into our comp. Knife's Edge was not going to work since we're not running a good frontline comp. I end up going with Stands United because I know there's going to be a lot of traits active and this will end up making Ezreal stronger, who I'm still hoping is going to be the carry. We give him the Runin's Hurricane, so he's hitting multiple targets, but notice we've also picked up the Lulu, and the Oriana, who will make the last two parts of this team to bring us up to five enchanters, which would give the maximum amount of healing we could get in a match, and hopefully we'll keep this team alive. But of course, this is TFT, and you're going to run into someone doing pretty much the exact same comp you are. Here they are, another innovator, but they're running the full AP Seraphine, who's going to be doing an absolute ton of damage to us every time she casts with the Mora Melicon, the Jewel Gauntlet, and the Spear of Sojin. I know that that team is going to be the one I'm going to have to beat in the end, but hopefully with five enchanters, if I can get there, that will give me the resistance I need to face that type of Seraphine. With this, it's just a matter of getting a little more healing, since with the enchanters on the team, the healing is going to be increased. Ezreal is my main damage dealer here, so I want to keep him protected, so Banshee's Claw goes on Seraphine, who's going to hang out next to Ezreal, and that will make sure that even if someone aims for him, it's not going to result in a Blitz Pull or other type of CC that can just make him lose immediately. As you can see, the healing just keeps this team alive, and we're currently still only at four enchanters. And with that victory, we are into the top four. Notice also that I have picked up a bunch of Janas along the way, and I'm one away with a Nico's help on the side, but I don't even need it because I found my gold Janna just waiting for me. And to get an idea of just how strong the enchanters are, I want you to keep an eye on what happens to my team when Lux ults here, which is nothing. Her ult does almost no damage to anyone because our magic resist is so strong. And just to show the moment, because it's the first time I've managed to do this this season with this champion, there is a gold Janna and the five enchanters on the board. And the only one left is that AP-based Seraphine that I'll ultimately have to fight. Since I'm really relying on Ezreal to be the carry here, I decide to trade in Singed for Jace and keep Jace in the back line so he can speed up everyone's attacks from there. Through a lot of rolling, I've managed to get a second Jace, so now I'll be able to get to two stars with that Nico's help. It's also now time to see what five enchanters can do against an AP Seraphine. And as you can see, her casts are not having the impact that they were before, where they were originally able to take our team out. Our team remains almost entirely unscathed. With Jace now up at two stars, I decide to move him over into the Socialite Hex to get the additional buff. Keep the Banshee's Claw on him just in case. That will nullify any effect from the first Seraphine cast that comes across, allowing Jace to be even more powerful as he just wipes out their entire team. Five Enchanters is really, really strong, especially against magic damage teams. Hope you enjoyed the video and have an absolutely, absolutely awesome day.